the cultural and societal influences of you. Before we look to develop our own understanding and deployment of our cultural and societal influences, I think it's worth understanding a global position on how attendance and interaction with the arts is influenced by social and cultural exposure. Sociologist Craig Upright explores this in his article and explains that, quote, attendance to the art events is influenced by adolescent exposure to the arts, educational attainment and current income, end of quote. Seeing links in relationships as, quote, shaping the attendance of art events, end of quote. When understanding that the consumption of high art activities, such as visual arts, opera, ballet, theatre, classical music, etc., is something that is largely, quote, handed down from one generation to the next, end of quote, and shows that social class differences explain different consumption patterns. And we see examples where one partner who infrequently attends arts marries into a cultural attendance to the arts. And we begin to look how this may change the behaviour within the relationship. So we see three possible outcomes. The first is that the behaviour doesn't change at all. The second is they attend more events but only as a couple. And the third is that they attend more events both as a couple but also without, suggesting that only their behaviour but also their internal preference may have been changed by their partner's taste. It's likely that we would see option two and option three, but through either of these, behaviour due to the influence has been changed. We must remember that arts participation is profoundly social. It is a product not just of each individual's experiences and attributes, but of their, quote, ongoing social relationships, end of quote. And although I and Upright set out this idea that a hierarchy of social and cultural influence through education, economic abilities and adolescence exposure, now within a digital landscape, we can begin to see that this has shifted. With John Holden suggesting that the, quote, huge increase in homemade culture over the last 30 years is mainly but not entirely fueled by the internet, end of quote. And so we see the cultural attendance can be expanded through platforms online, as well as culture can be made through platforms like YouTube and TikTok and Instagram, for example. What we begin to see through this journey, slightly outside the scope of individual and cultural influence, is that there are many factors that change the course of influence in observing the arts, and indeed creating art. Academics and psychologists find it hard to define creativity. With Neo and Sternberg commenting that, quote, creative ideas usually appear unexpectedly, with little conscious awareness of how they arose on the part of the people who have the ideas, end of quote. Now, I think after the journey of the first module, we can all agree to disagree with this idea, as creativity is part of the craft. It's a skill in which we grow and develop over time. Much like Bill Nye and his disregard for elements of preparation, due to the fact he's had years of experience, development and training, which he can call upon unconsciously. So when looking to creativity as individuals, and certainly when looking to your own process and practice within the discipline, we need to consider the societal and cultural influences that have changed your outlook as performers, your understanding and your developments to this point. But also how they may influence you going forward. We must also consider historical and political influences and that these shape our artistic, creative and performance outcomes. Remembering that throughout history, important milestones are nearly always documented and explored through art. Bringing this idea closer to home in understanding that we all have cultural and societal positions, which is gained through our environment, education and upbringing, these will have influences on multiple areas of your life, your understanding of situations, but importantly to acknowledge that when working within a creative industry, the creativity is shaped by your position within the community and your position as a citizen. And so this leads me to my first question to you all. What kind of influences do you feel interact and work with your position as a citizen?
And so let's look at an example. Let's link the requirement through acting theories or techniques like the object exercise that you're doing with both Sam and Park at the moment. When committing to and working on the exercise, there will be your own cultural and societal influences which can cast a lens over the process. With this in mind, I've got a couple of questions for you to explore as your group and feedback through your reflection. And so the first is to develop a discussion within groups around your cultural and societal influences and the how they will develop changes within the object exercise. And the second is to explore each other's or example cultural and societal influences and how they may change the way in which you perform that very object exercise. And finally, I bring to you three questions, which I want you to consider and independently reflect on within your journals, which I'll look over next week. What does recognising and reflecting on your cultural influence and background bring to your work as a performer? What does recognising and reflecting on your societal position bring to your work as a performer? What does acknowledging these develop for you as a performer and how can you use this knowledge to your advantage? In developing your own standpoint as a citizen with acknowledgement to your cultural and societal position allows you to move around and challenge your work as a creative. This conscious standpoint gives you a foundation in which you can develop an understanding of what you do or don't recognise and what you do or don't have experience of. This standpoint is important as a performer, but also important as a citizen. And so I look forward to developing these ideas throughout the rest of this year. See you next week.